Hello everybody, my name is Joshua and I'd like to welcome back to another episode of Coffee, Cats, and King. We're going to discuss books, both new and old. I'll share with you pictures of my cats, we'll make you wish, name your cats. I'm drinking enough coffee for me and everybody watching. So, I am on today uh, with a tag video. This is one that I intended to do a while ago and um, did not get around to it, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, this is an original tag that uh, Mr. Troy Treadup did, and he has since um, sort of disbanded his, uh, his YouTube channel. Um, I apologize, we're getting a rainstorm out there, so I'm sorry if you hear that. Uh, but this was a tag, as I said, that Troy came up with, an original tag. So, of course, <laughs> this is the Give My Regards to Broadway tag. And it's fairly short, uh, seven prompts, but I'm sure that I'll take entirely too long with it. So, uh, I'm going to give you a little cat footage. into it. So, prompt number one, Fiddler on the Roof, If I Were a Rich Man, recommend a book in which someone becomes very wealthy or very poor over the course of the story. This happens to be a book that came from Mr. Troy himself. So, this is Michael McDowell's Blackwater. And this is my very fancy copy, compliments of Troy. Um, and as you can see, yes, this is a, this is a book, my friends. Uh, this is nearly 900 pages. And in the course of Blackwater, uh, there is a family that um, we follow them through a lifetime. Uh, and in that lifetime, the family becomes so phenomenally wealthy uh, that they they actually truly don't even know what to do with the money um, and I want to talk about this book specifically because it is it's such an amazing book um, this is it is horror but it is very much a family drama as well and that family drama is so intense and relatable and enjoyable uh, and, and heartbreaking that uh, that at times I forgot I was reading a horror and <laughs> just totally invested myself in the family and then someone would die in some horrific way and I'd remember, oh, that's right, yeah, there's something weird going on here. Uh, but it worked. It worked so well. So this is a book that I would suggest to anybody uh, who is willing to devote some time to the book. Uh, as I said, it's 900 pages. Uh, now those pages, they'll move, but it's still 900 pages. But man, this is such a phenomenal book. Easily one of my favorites, uh, period. And um, man, I love this book, and I love Michael McDowell. Prompt number two is Annie. The sun will come out tomorrow. Recommend a book that takes place after the end of the world. All right, this is another one I can't remember. I'm sure I talked about it some after I read it, uh, but I believe that was last year, maybe even the year before now. Um, this is sort of a science fiction horror. This is Tim Sullivan with The Parasite War. This guy about to get attacked by some tentacled thing. This is basically about um, the, it's about the Earth at a somewhat undetermined time period uh, where these alien parasites have come to Earth and wiped out entire cities of people. Uh, these things known as the colloids have just taken over, they suck the life out of people uh, and there are just a select few number of survivors living uh, basically in the sewers 
because these things do not like, uh, they don't like water. One uh, particular Vietnam veteran through the course of the story basically decides that he is, uh, he is tired of it and he's going to make a life for himself up on the surface uh, because he's just tired of struggling day to day down in the sewers, uh, being threatened by this unknown, unseen horror above them. And uh, this is just a fantastic book. I, I don't think I've heard anyone else ever talk about this book before, but it's got, it's got a great cover um, and it's just, it's a blast. This book is an absolute blast. Fills the role for science fiction, fills the role for horror, and um, just a great, great sort of post-apocalyptic uh, alien horror. All right, number three is Hamilton. I want to be in the room where it happens. Recommend a book in which a character is in a room where they shouldn't be at a key moment. My very first instinct was to go with Stephen King's Eyes of the Dragon. But to, I feel that to properly explain that part of the book, I'd be ruining something. Um, so just know that this does fill that prompt. <laughs> but because I don't want to talk about it, uh, I am instead going to mention this book uh, where the scene in question happens right at the beginning and so I'm not ruining anything. This is The Skeleton Takes a Bow by Lee Perry. And this is the second uh, in the family skeleton mystery series, if you will, about uh, this living skeleton named Sid. And in this one, uh, Sid <laughs> desperately wants to just get out of the house and be a part of society. So the uh, local school is putting on a play uh, and it is decided that they will let his skull <laughs> <laughs> the the skull used uh, in Hamlet, which is fine, except for the fact that uh, the daughter who goes to that school, well, she she leaves Sid's skull there overnight, and in the course of that night, while he's in the bag, he hears somebody get murdered. Uh, so definitely a case of wrong place wrong time uh, and Sid is the only witness to this but of course he can't exactly come to the police and say hey I heard this person getting murdered uh, and let me listen to the suspects so that I can figure out who it is so <laughs> they have to figure out uh, one how Sid is going to be able to identify the killer and two how they are going to uh, be able to get the police to realize this person is the killer without letting out the secret that they have a living skeleton. So, <laughs> this is uh, the absolute best uh, sort of cozy mystery series I've ever read. I love it, I love it, I love it. I have the first one, I have the second one, love them both. Why I did not continue reading the series, I don't know. But this year I'm going to rectify that and get the rest of the series. But so much fun to read these books. Prompt number four is Oklahoma. Where the wind comes sweeping down the plain, recommend a book that makes very good use of its setting. Much to the surprise of everyone on here, I am not going to pick Harvest Home. I talk about Harvest Home incessantly, and I think some of you get tired of it. Instead, I'm going to talk about another uh, little-known horror novel. This is Peter Saxton with The Torturer. And this lovely castle you see on the frontier uh, is the setting that I am referring to. Uh, basically, there's this castle known as Castle de la Mort, where for hundreds of years uh, there's just been people dying, people dying, people dying. The people in the town nearby are so superstitious, uh, they know that there are ghosts there, they know that there are demons there, that there are awful horrible entities there so they lock up the castle and refuse to let anyone inside until this film crew decides that they are going to film a movie there because hey what better place to film a horror movie than in a haunted castle so they somehow gain access to this place 
Uh, and I know you'll be shocked, but uh, they die in awful horrible ways within the confines of this castle. Uh, because of this uh, this horrifying thing called the Torturer. Uh, we don't know if he's a man, if he's a specter of some sort or what, uh, that is haunting the castle and uh, just totally obliterating them in awful, horrible, gruesome, gory ways. I love this book. It's not going to be for everyone. Uh, there are some... <laughs> there are some editing issues in it, but basically this reads like a horror movie uh, out of maybe like the 70s or so and I loved every second of it. I thought it was great and uh, had some awesome kill scenes and this one definitely makes use of the whole castle atmosphere. Number five, Phantom of the Opera. Turn your face away from the garish light of day. Recommend a book in which a character actively embraces the dark side of their personality. I picked two for this one as well, uh, one that I have here physically and the other that I do not because I've given my copy to a friend. Uh, the first that I want to briefly mention is Rex Miller's Chain Gang with this horrid step back art. <laughs> uh, and this is a book about Daniel Bunkowski, who is also known as Chain Gang. And Chain Gang is essentially um, a regular man, or may have been a regular man at one point, who was experimented on by the government to become the ultimate killing machine. He is 500 pounds of muscle and anger, and they basically use him uh, during the war to wipe out entire squadrons of people. Uh, legend says that he has killed a person for every pound of flesh on him and he is so dangerous that as soon as the war ends they drug him and muzzle him and stick him in this uh, confinement chamber and leave him there until they think they need him again. Uh, unfortunately for them Daniel is far more intelligent than they give him credit for and when they release him the second time, he decides that he is going to make full use of his abilities and maybe double or even triple that legendary kill count of his. Uh, this, is a, this is a brutal book. Absolutely brutal book. Now, for one that is... For one that is much less on the gory side, but much more on the psychological, you know, this is just really messed up side. I also want to suggest David Jester's This Is How You Die. This one differs uh, in that it is about a teenage boy named Herman who is constantly bullied at school, uh, berated, people just treat him absolutely awfully, and this is not one of those books where you feel bad for him though, really, uh, because Herman is a terrible person. Uh, he knows it, he embraces it, and there's only one person in life that Herman looks up to that is a serial killer known as the Butcher. And at a pivotal moment in his life, uh, Herman's father passes away, and in going through his things, Herman realizes that his father was the Butcher. And this totally changes everything for him because he realizes that he can, in fact, embrace that disturbing, dark, awful part of himself. And he makes it his, his goal to continue the butcher's work. He is going to be the butcher 2.0, the butcher reinvented, uh, newer, stronger, better. And what he lacks in experience, he thinks he's going to make up for uh, in sheer determination and enthusiasm. Again, it's not going to be for everyone uh, because Herman is such an unlikable character uh, and you are with him all the way through. But this is more akin really to watching the movie Henry, uh, Portrait of a Serial Killer, where you know he's an awful person all the way through and you know it's going to be... Uh, it's going to make you squirm and make you uncomfortable. That's kind of how this book goes. So another one that uh, people don't talk about as often, I think, as they should, 
for those that are interested in that sort of fiction or that sort of non-fiction for that matter uh, and in getting into the head of a serial killer this is how you die is exactly what you need to be reading number six is wicked something has changed within me something is not the same recommend a book you loved so much that it made you feel you could defy gravity this prompt was a little harder for me because well because I focus mostly on horror and when I read a really good horror uh, it's not often that I'm left with a feeling of oh wow that was amazing and it made me feel so good uh, it, it leaves me feeling dread uh, and upset and that's but that's but that's point right uh, so again I kind of picked two on this um, for the first, this is a book that I love from start to finish, and I will sing its praise all day long. And anyone who disagrees with me, uh, get in line so that I can punch you each in the nose, uh, because you are wrong. This is an incredible book in all ways. This is Richard Chazemar's Chasing the Boogeyman. And this is a nonfiction memoir of his life and childhood mixed with a fictitious account of a killer who is also kind of based on real events uh, but things are mixed in to to make it unreal and you never quite know what's what what is real what is not uh, but man I, I just I love this book I love this book I love this book Everyone needs to read this book. Again, this book did not make me feel like I was going to soar <laughs> because that wasn't the purpose, but I loved every second of it. Uh, now, for my other pick on this one, this is a book that did, in fact, make me soar uh, in that it left me with such a feeling of joy and happiness uh, and, yes, maybe a tear or two in my eye that... Um, if this is your type of read, you should absolutely read it. This is Michael J. Fox's Lucky Man, and this is obviously a memoir of his life growing up, uh, getting into acting, realizing that he has Parkinson's, and what's going to happen after that. So this was written, I believe, 10 years after he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. It's, it's incredible how positive he is about everything and how he, he just spins it in such a way where, you know, other people are saying, oh my gosh, you're, you know, your life is over. You, you have Parkinson's, this awful debilitating disease. And he's just, he's just like, no, uh, no, what I have is a loving, amazing wife who's going to help me get through this. Uh, and a family that cherishes me and I cherish them and a an endless stream of people who support me and love me and I'm going to do the same for them and it's just so inspiring so amazing again if you are the type to read uh, nonfiction uh, specifically you know memoirs this is absolutely one for you especially considering that um, the documentary is coming out soon from and about Mr. Michael J. Fox as he continues to educate and help others with Parkinson's uh, all these years later. So just really astounding. Love this one. And definitely one that made me feel like I could soar. And number seven is Grease. You're the one that I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Name someone you'd like to see do this tag. First and foremost, of course, the one that I actually want. My lovely wife, Paige, over at Paige's Open Book. I think this would be a fun tag for her, too. Uh, so I'm going to suggest it to her. Uh, and you may have already done this, and I missed it. If so, I apologize. Ignore me. Uh, I would like to see Andrew at a came from the page do this. Because, again, I think this would be a fun one, and I can... I've sort of formulated in my head some of his answers for this, and I want to see if I'm right. <laughs> so uh, there you go. That is the Give My Regards to Broadway tag uh, created by the ever-wonderful Mr. Troy Tradup, 
who we already miss here on BookTube. But uh, look forward to seeing in the comments. Uh, thank you for leaving us with this, uh, as well as with the wonderful videos that you did. And uh, I'm going to end off here, guys. So thank you for joining me. Uh, answer some of these prompts below if you'd like, or suggest it to others. Uh, let me know what you think, if you would like to talk about any of these books that I have mentioned. And uh, that's all. Stay safe. Drink great coffee. Cheers.